What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Thursday, and welcome to this week's episode of Off Topic. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and tonight I'm going to be having a little bit of Jack, a good cigar from our friends over at Crowned Heads, and I want to introduce you to someone very important to me, someone who has taught me probably more than anything by example what it means to be a hard worker and a family man. It's my poppy. So tonight I invited him over for dinner and let's recap. Poppy, unlike myself, has some pretty tough hands. From working construction as a young man on what were then some of Manhattan's, you know, skyline significant buildings, in 1960, I was just a regular laborer. More concrete, lumber. But I know Well, they were called high rises then. Yeah, but now. Which was 25 or 30 stories. Into New York City cab driving and meat routes and black car service. The guy broke his ass for over 40 years and not in, you know, super intellectual Wall Street kind of ways. I mean, the guy was, you know, salt of the earth, New York City kind of guy. Uh, the kind of person that the city is built upon. It's funny, Poppy came from blue collar people as well. Uh, his father was a big construction worker, worked on the Empire State Building, for God's sake. Practically all the buildings he worked on are still in the skyline. What it, Lincoln Building, Radio City, Empire State Building. You, you brushed over the Empire State Building as if it's like just another building. Well, it's basically <laughs> another building, it's just taller. What was weird was for even at that time, his father had the foresight uh, to understand that education was key and that his son should go on to become educated and a member of, you know, probably the white collar working class. And yet my poppy chose the opposite. You know, he chose 15 hour shifts on the streets of Midtown. And even now on his 78th year, the guy still wakes up at five o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, to pick up people in New Brunswick. Five o'clock, I got up. The alarm was set for five o'clock. I got up five o'clock, had breakfast, did what I had to do. Left the house at six, had to pick up at seven. That's what I'm saying, I put in a full day. So why, for what reason did this man give so much of his life, such an enormous fraction, a percentage of his life to, to, to work, you know? Why, why did he sacrifice so much? It was because of his family. It was because of his, his wife and his, and his children and, and the grandchildren that he would one day hope to have. My grandfather, although not this hyper-educated, you know, intelligent man, has an incredible ability to understand what is important and focus on that and, and not, not be distracted like so many of us unfortunately are. Family's always first. Family's always first. You gotta see what you gotta do for yourself, for your wife, and for your children. But even with that why, you know, even with that ultimate reason and goal for, you know, supporting your family for the greater good, it still doesn't make sense that the man, you know, was able to give so much for so long. We're not talking about a rough internship of her summer. We're not talking about a 10 year job he didn't like or, or even less. We're talking about a career. I mean, literally 40 years. The guy doesn't make it sound like much, but 40, maybe more years, realistically more years than 40 of stupid amount of work with such little actual enjoyment because he wasn't even around to reap the, own, the benefits of the money and the, you know, the wage he was bringing home. When your kids were in middle school, did you have dinner with them? Or no. Or you at work? No. Put, you, you had to put a lot of trust in your wife. Oh, certainly. She was a, lot. a very, very good person. She took care of everything. And... Uh, in a sense of the word, she spoiled me. I never knew where I was going to be. Right. And when and what time I was going to get home, unless I decided to, that was enough, it's time to go home. I took care of the kids, the kids went to school, I dressed, whatever they had to do, had dinner. Always had my dinner ready for me whenever I got home at night, whatever time it might have been, yeah. I would sit down and eat. The kids would be sleeping already. 
It was because, yes, he did see the end of the tunnel, but even before the end of the tunnel, he actually did enjoy what he was doing. My best customer, and I don't mean money-wise, just the type of person that she was, was Jacqueline Onassis. Class act, but I picked her up uh, numerous amounts of times. He enjoyed the freedom that his jobs gave him. Although being a taxi driver certainly isn't the most glamorous of jobs. Although, you know, delivering meat on a route, I'm sure didn't, you know, satisfy my grandfather's soul for creativity. It allowed him to be independent, right? It gave him the ability to control his life, something that isn't really all that common, something that so many of the people that he drove to and from work that made 8,000 times more money than he did, didn't have, right? He, in simplicity, had this really like macro understanding of what really is luxury. And his unbelievable ability to recharge with almost no fuel, right? I need time to recharge. I have to watch the office. I need a drink and a couple of hours a couple times a week to really fuel my tank. This is the kind of guy that, you know, got home from work at 11, poured himself, you know, a beer, had a steak alone, and went to sleep, only to wake up at five o'clock again. Yes, we all get tired. We all have to stop once in a while. Take a break, rest, start all over again. But that's how life goes on. That's all it comes down to. You know, that ability to refuel, to recharge his body on such little actual energy, on such little you know, actual coal, it, I don't know, it's basically unparalleled. I, 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 don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. The body can adjust. If you make it adjust, it can adjust. But it's your mind that'll tell your body, oh, I hate this, I hate that. If you, if you look at it like that, you lost the battle. My grandfather uh, and so many of the people like him, the people that I grew up idolizing, right? My uncles, my cousins, they understood Although not very much, you know, really the, I think the average education of my family was something like seventh grade. They understood that value in freedom, right? They understood how important it was to control their life, to live on their terms. So even though I, as basically a member of the first full generation of my family to be educated, could have been something more impressive than a you know, online watch salesman. Uh, I could have been an attorney, and, and who the fuck knows what I could have went on to do professionally. It, it was not in my DNA. My DNA was my Christmas table. You know, my DNA was everything I saw growing up. My DNA was a dry cleaner that became a real estate millionaire, right? My DNA was a garbage man that, you know, lived bigger and more extravagantly and, and, and really, in many ways, still conservatively you know, than, than anyone. I didn't put much stock in always like what people thought of what they did. I don't really care if I'm at a bar and someone asks me, what do you do for a living? I answer, I sell watches. And they're like, oh, okay, that's cool. It doesn't mean anything, right? Because for people who know, for people that understand, people, my younger cousins, that maybe will look at me one day because I suppose one day that you know, my uncles won't be there, you know, the same way that they were there for me, for them, they'll see the importance of freedom, you know, the importance of doing what it is that you actually want. The, the, the asset of being able to look back on your life, even if it's just look back on your year, frankly, and say, it wasn't perfect and, and next year will be better but holy shit, I owned it. It's mine. The buck stops with me. I mean, I'm not saying that we, as a family, do it the right way. I'm not saying that everyone should do what we do, by any means. But what I am saying, and what I think my grandfather has made pretty clear, 
Some people have things that are inside of them that really shouldn't be ignored. You know, he genuinely believes that if you are in tune with yourself and you understand what kind of is in your DNA, what you're kind of meant to go and do, you will be so much more successful than if you allow yourself to be pressured into, you know, what you're not. And although me not being a lawyer was a tremendous letdown to my family, it was really only appropriate. So no, I am not as tough as my grandpa. I am nowhere near. And no, I can't say with certainty that at 78 I'll be able to look back and say that I sacrifice as much for my family as he for his. I just can't. But if I fall short compared to my grandfather, a man who has in a weird way, in, in, a, in a very peculiar way, achieved so much, I, I think that's a win. He's not perfect. And frankly, my poppy is hard to love sometimes. Net-net, when it comes to being a hard worker and a family man, the things that I, without a doubt, aspire to be the most, there is no one that I could possibly look up to more than him. If you enjoy what you're doing, there's no, there's no limit to what you can do. When I deal with a lot of smart people, I just tell them, I don't know, I'm just a cab driver.